Hello, I'm John Canalopoulos, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School in New York City, New York, and director of the um, Laser Vision Institute here in Athens, Greece. It's my pleasure to introduce and try and explain to you this uh, very uh, simple and, in our opinion, very helpful device. Uh, the Sequan um, is an um, uh, ocular scatter uh, measuring device. And uh, it's, it's quite simple. This is the actual uh, position that the patient sits at. Mm -hmm. uh, the patient is examined uh, one eye at a time. So is the patient is seen monocularly through this ocular here. And this is what the patient is seeing. I'm giving you the example of the bright blinking circle, which is meant not to distract the patient. And the patient has to focus in the uh, central tiny circle, which is split vertically in half. And at each given moment, one of the two halves, either the left or the right, is brighter, flickers brighter. And this is what the patient is asked to do, is by clicking uh, on here, left or right, to decide at each given moment, while this test is being performed, which of the central circle hemimeridians is flickering brighter. Um, and uh, we're gonna go through more technical aspects, but it's a very simple test. It takes uh, uh, under 10 minutes to perform, and uh, uh, the actual uh, row data position is uh, about two minutes. Uh, it's very easy to train patients, even older patients. Um, we have found great facility with this device in getting a better idea uh, in post-refractive surgery patients, uh, correlating uh, epithelial maps obtained with OCT, uh, cornea irregularities obtained either with sine fluke, uh, placido imaging, or the uh, new Cassini device. Um, and uh, finally, uh, trying to see if uh, ocular scatter has something to do with um, uh, degradation of uh, the patient's uh, uh, quality of vision when, uh, if uh, that occurs. Okay, so uh, uh, again, just to note that uh, in reality, only one half of this central circle uh, flickers and uh, it might be perceived by the um, person being examined that the other half flickers as a result of uh, ocular scatter within the eye. So this is how this psychosomatic uh, measurement is trying to establish the ocular scatter. Uh, just a few caveats, uh, the prescription of the patient can be placed here with these uh, trial lenses uh, for greater accuracy. Uh, and uh, we're seeing some intrinsic uh, measuring um, ability of the device to show us the uh, reli reliability. Um, here we're seeing the uh, curvature of normal individuals that as you can see is very much age dependent. So each individual is being um, graphed against people of their own age. Uh, we're seeing here one of our actually optometrists that had the uh, LASIK surgery about uh, 10 years ago. Um, she is now in her mid-30s uh, and uh, has had three children and uh, you can see that uh, the uh, actual device uh, shows uh, the logarithmic a normal response, uh, the best response, the worst response and normal is somewhere in between preferably towards the, uh, the best normal and uh, our optometrist score is better than uh, the best normal for her age group showing an uh, excellent uh, LASIK result. So where would this test uh, be uh, significant? Although we're, we don't have uh, the discrimination by the actual test, um, which I need to say was pioneered by uh, Thomas uh, Vanderberg of uh, Amsterdam, um, we don't have the definition whether scatter that occurs and is measured by this device it comes from the cornea, the lens, uh, or the vitreous or uh, internal reflection within the uh, retina. But in refractive surgery patients, we assume that this comes from uh, the cornea inter intervention. Um, in a patient with complaining of poor quality of vision where topographies, wavefront, and refraction are perfect, uh, if scatter is not good, then uh, we have an area to look at. Um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, an increased scatter is, is being created uh, in the cornea from our uh, laser intervention, for example. Um, the other uh, it, patients that we're studying that's very interesting is the um, uh, pre- and cataract age patients where we can actually see a more sophisticated method of measuring visual function. We're accustomed to measuring uh, snarl acuity and unfortunately snarl acuity is still, uh, by the FAA and uh, international 
authorities the way pilots, uh, commercial pilots are measured. Um, in our opinion, uh, this is a much more sophisticated test besides uh, visual acuity uh, and contrasistivity to measure the degradation of visual function that depends on, on ocular scatter. Uh, and we can um, see very effectively patients in, uh, after 65 that uh, we're starting to clinically see with the slip lamp cataract development, their ocular scatter increasing uh, quite significantly. And uh, the preliminary data, we've been working this device a year and a half, uh, makes us believe that this is the way uh, that we're going to be also measuring visual uh, function as it uh, is able to give us a higher um, level of uh, visual function measurement. Uh, so we hope uh, that uh, this uh, uh, type of measurements will be incorporated in our routine um, refractive surgery and cataract surgery evaluation. Um, it, as you can see, it's a very simple device. We have no financial interest and we were uh, uh, investigating its application in uh, normal patients and patients with it that require higher visual skills such as uh, professional athletes and uh, uh, commercial fighter pilots and obviously in our refractive surgery population and our pre or uh, cataract surgery population. Uh, I, found, I hope you found this uh, brief uh, uh, brushing towards uh, getting to know the sequent uh, measuring of ocular scatter interesting. Uh, signing out uh, from Athens, Greece, this is John Kenalopoulos.